Oh, so Shulk is a demon now, apparently. It looks like Luxon really will stop at nothing, including making things up, to slander your favorite Xeno character. Spin the wheel to find out who it'll be next week. It's only a matter of time before your waifu is the one on the chopping block. Anyway, when I'm saying Shulk is a demon, he's not an actual demonic evil entity or even a demonic species. He is still just a Hams. But, in terms of thought experiments, he is similar to a specific type of demon. And that would be Laplace's demon. While I will not be going over plot details here, I only really need to discuss Shulk's abilities and a bit of lore, those things aren't revealed or fully achieved until partway through the story of Xenoblade 1, and I may need to show cutscenes that spoil certain things. Plus, I'm going to talk about Xenoblade 2 a little bit at the end, so I would not recommend watching this video unless you have played through the end of Prison Island in 1 and finished Chapter 3 in 2. Pierre Simon Laplace is an important historical scientific figure who made plenty of discoveries and advancements in a bunch of different fields, and if you've studied basically any STEM field at a college level, you've probably heard of or done something related to his work at least once. Despite his long list of achievements, we're not actually going to be talking about something he invented entirely on his own this time. Laplace does not seem to have been the first thinker in late 18th, early 19th century France to come up with the idea of such an entity, nor did he use the term demon himself in any of his publications, but his publication on the topic does seem to have been the first, so the concept bears his name to this day. The demon is a way of describing the concept of causal determinism, that since every effect has a cause, if you know the exact state of the entire universe and all the laws of physics, it's possible to predict how everything will happen in the future. To quote directly from a public domain translation of the 1814 publication, a philosophical essay on probabilities, I will not be attempting a French accent. We ought then to regard the present state of the universe as the effect of its anterior state and as the cause of the one which is to follow. Given for one instant an intelligence which could comprehend all the forces by which nature is animated, and the respective situation of the beings who compose it, an intelligence sufficiently vast to submit these data to analysis, it would embrace in the same formula the movements of the greatest bodies of the universe and those of the lightest atom. For it, nothing would be uncertain, and the future, as the past, would be present to its eyes. The human mind offers, in the perfection which it has been able to give to astronomy, a feeble idea of this intelligence. Its discoveries in mechanics and geometry, added to that of universal gravity, have enabled it to comprehend in the same analytical expressions the past and future states of the system of the world. Applying the same method to some other objects of its knowledge, it has succeeded in referring to general laws, observed phenomena, and in foreseeing those which given circumstances ought to produce. All these efforts in the search for truth tend to lead it back continually to the vast intelligence which we have just mentioned, but from which it will always remain infinitely removed. What? I, I only said no French accent, not no other weird voice. Anyway, in turning that from, like, early 1900s English to actual present-day English, he's basically saying that if you know all of physics, and you know the exact state of every particle in the universe, you might be able to predict exactly where the universe is going and also extrapolate backwards to find out everything that happened in the past. This is the essence of determinism, which is basically the philosophy Shulk is trying to break out of in the plot of Xenoblade 1, and it is worth noting that determinism isn't 100% confirmed. There, the jury is still out on quantum mechanics and thermodynamics, and actually, there's another more specific demon called Maxwell's demon, which is related to just breaking the second law of thermodynamics as opposed to, like, solving all of physics. But the whole point is, that sounds very similar to a certain description we get of how the Monado works. Ether makes up everything in the world. The Monado can control and read the flow of Ether. That is how the visions work. It knows what all the Ether is like, so it's able to successfully predict exactly what the ether will do in the future, and as such, grant visions of the future. Shulk literally has the power of Laplace's demon, and that's how he's able to get visions. Now obviously, he's not as powerful as the hypothetical demon is. He does not instantly check, he can't control what he's getting a vision of, 
he just kind of gets them randomly, can't control things, and he only gets visions of specific moments and specific locations. He doesn't get a random, this is the entire state of Bionis and Mechanis at X time in the future. He doesn't even know exactly how far in the future visions are going to happen, but it's the exact same principle. The rest of the quote is more or less saying that the sum total of human scientific knowledge is effectively an imperfect Laplace's demon. Keep in mind, this was written over 200 years ago, so we've clearly advanced a whole lot since then. He's talking as if the discovery of universal gravitation is relatively new, and if you really think about it, that was written closer to the time when Newton published his stuff than it is to the present day, so he's not entirely wrong, I guess. But the point is, even with the massive advances we've made in two centuries and our newfound ability to offload a lot of the difficult math to machines, we're still not perfect in being able to predict the universe, nor have we been able to prove or disprove that Laplace's demon is even possible. This is perhaps in part due to the fact that we literally don't know what 95% of the universe is made out of, so we can't exactly rigorously run experiments on stuff we can't reach, let alone understand. All things considered, even if it's completely weird to our reckoning, the universe of Xenoblade 1 is a lot simpler, because Ether is everything. They know exactly what makes up the universe, because it is just one thing. There's obviously different types of Ether, but it only seems to be one type of particle, wave, or whatever. We don't really know what ether is, and it doesn't really matter where it would fall on the standard model. It matters that ether is what makes up the universe, so if you understand ether like the Monado does, you do understand everything. Now, if you've also played Xenoblade 2, you might reasonably think, okay, Shulk is Laplace's demon, but what about Rex? You didn't talk about him at all, and he also gets visions of the future through Mithra's foresight. Well, it is similar. It is basically observing present phenomena in order to predict what will happen. But I am of the opinion that foresight is less powerful than visions. We know from some early game conversations that blades get their power by manipulating ether in the air. And just that term, ether in the air, is enough to tell you why I think Foresight's weaker. Ether is in the air. That means all of the air isn't made out of ether. That means all of everything isn't made out of ether. So while it does seem like all living things in Arrest have some ether in them, since most of them can become drivers, you can't predict exactly how the universe is going to go on a massive scale with just reading ether. Based on all the instances we can see of Foresight being used in cutscenes, it looks like Mithra generates a sort of ether bubble around her and is able to use the ether signatures of creatures in it in order to predict what way they're going to move and allow Rex to dodge or counter or stuff like that. This still makes sense. In a small, relatively isolated system, even one that's not made entirely out of ether, if a being is using ether to fight, just by tracking that, which we know is a thing Blades can do, because a Brone is capable of doing that over long distances, and with an extreme amount of calculations, which we know Mithra is capable of doing, it would theoretically be possible to, for short periods of time, predict what someone using ether power is going to do. This makes sense. However, extrapolating that to the entire universe, including the parts that aren't made out of ether, just isn't feasible. There are too many variables that have nothing to do with the ether you're keeping track of in order to tell. And that's why Rex isn't so much a Laplace's demon as Shulk is. And one last thing involving Xenoblade 2 main game and Torna massive spoilers through the end of both games and What about that scene at the end of Torna where Mithra has a vision of the future and sees Rex and all that? Well, that's just because of the conduit. She is connected to the conduit, which has a bunch of mysterious unknown powers, and this whole thing happened when she was partially using the third sword and Numa's power, which is all the reality warping stuff. That goes beyond foresight. That is a Shulk-like vision coming from the fact that she is a computer designed to harness the power of an artifact that generates infinite energy and would allow for ridiculous computations like that. It is a lot more Laplace's demony, and it is possible that, at least on a planetary scale, Numa can also predict things like that, 
but we never see stuff like that in the game, so who really knows? And I took way too long trying to record the quotation from the Laplace book, so I'm gonna go to bed now. Goodbye.